Uh, hi, my name is Matt. I'm the Vice President of Business Development and Governmental Affairs here at the McAllen Chamber of Commerce. Um, and I'm originally from uh, Europe, uh, born in Poland, lived in Germany for a while, and came to the Valley 12 years ago. Uh, so I'll talk to you uh, today about customer service uh, for European customers. Uh, some of the examples here will focus on the restaurant industry as it said it provides an interesting uh, showcase uh, for certain differences and cultural differences uh, with dealing with Europeans. Uh, but uh, these rules can be applied universally. Uh, starting off, uh, an important uh, statement is to understand that not all Europeans are the same. Europe is geographically about the size of the United States altogether, but culturally we're much, much more diverse. Uh, Southern and Southwestern Europeans tend to be very much like Valleyites. Uh, North, Northeastern Europeans are quite different uh, and the countries geographically in between are a mix of, uh, of those two uh, cultures. So it's very important to understand that not all Europeans are like. Uh, on the other hand, there's certain commonalities that we can walk away with which provide us the rules that apply, can be applied uh, or dealing with your uh, European customer or, or patron. Um, First of all, one of the first uh, issues that we want to talk about is personal space. Uh, personal space among Europeans is generally quite larger than we see here in the valley. Uh, over here, uh, we feel very comfortable if somebody is about a foot two feet away from us. Uh, for Europeans, uh, that would uh, most likely be a very uncomfortable uh, situation. Uh, as a rule of thumb, arm's length difference is, um, is a good indicator of how far away you should be from your uh, patron or customer that comes from Europe. Uh, also, uh, greetings is uh, falls under the personal space area. Europeans generally are not backslapping cultures uh, unless the individuals uh, know each other very, very well. Uh, so a nice firm handshake with a man and a gentle handshake uh, with a woman uh, is probably the most appropriate form of greeting. Uh, not necessarily slaps on the, on the back, holding the shoulder, uh, kisses on the cheek. Uh, but when it comes to women, in some cultures it is considered appropriate uh, to kiss the woman's hand or bow. Um, on the other hand, it's probably most uh, convenient to just err on the side of the handshake. The other commonality that we see across European cultures is a perception of personal property. Uh, generally, Europeans are highly protective of their personal properties. And this applies to um, particularly to pers uh, service personnel that takes care of bags, valet services for cars, uh, taking pictures, etc., uh, etc., et interacting with the personal property of this individual. You always, um, and it also applies to if you make a compliment to somebody on a piece of clothing, on a piece of jewelry, uh, the car that they have, the camera that they carry, anything uh, related. It's very common here in the valley to touch the object, uh, or if somebody's here to serve just to grab the object and provide assistance. Now, for Europeans, that's most likely going to be a very uncomfortable situation, uh, perceived as invading their personal space and or uh, making attempts at their personal property. So you don't want to touch anything without first asking for permission and getting express consent. These rules also apply beyond personal property, specifically talking about children. In general, Europeans are much more protective of the children as well as which individual approaches their child and interacts with their child. Uh, than we can do here locally in uh, the valley. Uh, so while it's very common down here uh, for an individual to come up to a child, to touch them, to kind of play with them a little bit, maybe brush their hair to avoid my uh, it such activities are generally not happening in Europe and uh, are going to be perceived uh, quite differently uh, than we do here locally. So you definitely want to make sure that if you're going to interact with a child beyond just a very simple handshake of sticking out your hand and shaking the child's hand, uh, you want to coordinate with the parent that they're okay with you uh, touching their child, even if it's just brushing their hair. Subject of conversation is another uh, common, uh, common theme uh, across Europe. The Valiants are generally make friends instantly, uh, which means we tell people the story of our life at the line of the HEB. Uh, and uh, pretty much almost all subject matters are open for discussion, even with a complete stranger. And it's quite different in Europe. Uh, Europeans are generally more reserved and more protective um, of themselves, their personal information and everything else. In general, you want to avoid the common subject matters like politics, money, religion, uh, or be too intrusive about family life, their personal uh, activities, as well as what their goals are or what they're going to be doing here locally. Important uh, aspect, specifically for the restaurant industry, uh, relates to tips, gratuities, and general behavior at a restaurant. In many European countries, uh, 
gratuity uh, such as tips or any of our uh, service fees paid to the individual already included in your check that you get uh, at the uh, at the restaurant. Uh, therefore, uh, don't be surprised if a European patron uh, tips you very little uh, or none at all. Uh, it doesn't mean that they were very unsatisfied with your service. It does not neither does it mean that uh, they are just generally rude. Uh, they just might not understand the fact that you're working for two fifteen an hour, or that your employees work for two fifteen an hour. Uh, for us, it is very common to eat at a restaurant uh, several times a week, and uh, in many cases, a couple times a day. Uh, and restaurants are just uh, part of our daily life. Now, Europeans eat uh, at restaurants much more infrequently than uh, than U.S. citizens or valets, for that matter, uh, do. Uh, therefore, a trip to a restaurant uh, has a totally different structure they are much more likely to stay there for an extended period of time. It is not uncommon to uh, have a European patron that might stay at their table uh, for two to three hours at a time. Uh, I have several friends in the restaurant industry and they usually refer to them as campers. Along these lines, uh, Europeans are very uh, fond of good customer service, uh, but a waiter that comes to their table on a very frequent basis might be felt as a perception of, uh, or maybe perceived as a sign of, we want you to leave. Uh, so you definitely want to provide good customer service and check up on them regularly, but you want to be as unintrusive as possible to avoid creating that, that image. Uh, another aspect to, to, to look at is the consumption of alcohol and beverages. Uh, generally here, uh, we don't consume alcohol during the day uh, and of course, due to the laws, children don't, don't consume alcohol. Uh, that is quite different in Europe. Uh, it is not uncommon that individuals will drink an alcoholic beverage with the lunch. Uh, also, in many uh, European countries, the legal drinking age of children is somewhere around 16 to 18 years old. Uh, so it will not be uncommon that a European patron might want to purchase beer or wine uh, for an individual that by US standards is considered a minor. Um, and uh, at that point in time, you want to go along with the local laws as well as the rules of the restaurant. Uh, and uh, if they interfere with the desire of your patron, you want to politely explain to them uh, the situation uh, and try to accommodate them as much as possible while staying within the rules of the law. The final uh, point I'd like to make uh, in terms of Europeans is to is considered very good customer service if you learn a few uh, simple phrases. Uh, hello, goodbye please, thank you, uh, in various languages uh, so you can communicate with these individuals. Uh, they'll be perceived as a very nice touch on your part. Uh, a lot of Europeans are English speakers. It's very common to be multilingual uh, in Europe. Uh, so your English should serve just fine servicing them. But it might add a nice little personal touch if you learn a couple words. Uh, along these lines, though, a word of caution. Uh, not all Europeans are alike and national uh, instincts and tendencies among Europeans uh, are quite strong. Therefore, you at no circumstance want to confuse nationalities uh, and don't make any assumptions. Uh, if you're unsure where the person is from, don't make a guess, ask them. Uh, because calling uh, a Polish individual, for example, German or Russian, or an, or an English individual, uh, Irish, Scottish, or French, uh, and vice versa, uh, would be considered highly offensive. Um, so, you know, err on the side of English, uh, be inquisitive. Uh, while being polite, and if you know a few phrases, uh, go ahead and showcase them. I'm sure that will help the, uh, the customer service perception. General tips uh, of dealing with Europeans. I hope you found the information helpful. Uh, and go ahead and just be aware that we are not all uh, alike, and there's some certain common trends that we want to follow. Uh, following these steps will not only showcase that uh, you have made a good effort to provide good customer service for a European client, but also help alleviate the perception which is commonly held in Europe. Uh, that Americans are quite rude and quite ignorant. Uh, so you'll be doing a great uh, job not only selling your, your enterprise, uh, but also speaking well uh, on behalf of our culture.